Hey guys, Greg here, and let's solve longest consecutive sequence. So we're given an unsorted array of integers nums, and we need to return the length of the longest consecutive elements sequence. This is such a confusingly written problem, and it's much, much better with the example. So if you look right here, we have 100, 4, 200, 1, 3, and 2. What you'd think they mean by longest consecutive sequence is like if you had 1, then 2, then 3 in the array in order, but the order doesn't matter here. In this array, there actually exists the consecutive elements of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember, order does not matter, and therefore that is the longest consecutive sequence, and we just want its length, and so we would return 4. And in this example, they go crazy to the extreme here. You can even have duplicates as well, and so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They all exist in there, and so the longest consecutive sequence is 0 to 8, which is going to be 9 numbers. Now the brute force solution would definitely just to be sort this thing, and from there it's really not that bad in n log n time you could sort this array and you would make it okay we have one two three and four and at the end our useless 100 and 200 and then we'd say whoa all of the sequence stuff is actually in order here and we're not going to write the code but you could imagine that kind of checking off by one every single time through the array in order is really not too bad we could definitely return our answer of four there however they even said in the problem that they want you to do better than that so we're going to try and come up with the O of N solution. Now, whenever you're not sure with some tricky array problem like this, you might have a feeling that some sort of a set or hash map might be useful. And it turns out that a set of the numbers or a hash set is going to be very, very useful. And so if you basically just store all of this stuff in a set, we put all of the numbers into the set so that you can immediately do an O of one lookup to see if we have one of these numbers. So why would that be useful? Well, that would mean if we saw this number here, well, how would we have a sequence from this? Well, you could have basically two different directions. You could have, well, 99. If 99 was in the set, then you'd have 99, then 100. And so that's a sequence bigger than one. Or you could have 100 and 101. If this was in the set, well, then you could have, again, a sequence of two. And you could kind of keep checking that. You could say, well, if we have 101, do we have 102? Do we have 103? Or if you could go the other direction, we could do something like, okay, we have 99 in the set. Well, do we have 98 in the set? Well, do we have 97? And you could keep doing that you could keep doing that check. However, theoretically, how long could this thing run? Well, if all of those numbers actually were in the set, like let's just change this to for now, one, two, three, and four. Well, if we have these numbers, if we checked for one, well, we could say, do we have zero? No, but do we have two? Yes. Do we have three? Yes. Do we have four? Yes. So we could say that we have from this element right here, we found a sequence of length four. However, that would happen again over here. We would have at two here, we'd say, okay, do we have one? Actually, yes, we do. So we have one. Do we have zero? No, we don't. Do we have three? Yes. Do we have four? Yes. And so that's running again. And so he basically again outputs, we have four. Same thing with three. Do we have two? Yes. Do we have one? Yes. Do we have zero? No. Do we have four? Yes. Do we have five? No. And so again, he outputs, hey, we have a four sequence. And so four would do exactly the same thing. This is basically an O of N squared algorithm because for each, every single item in the array, you are going to basically check potentially all of the other other stuff in the array as well. However, there's a clever way to optimize this. What if you only ran that check if the previous number is not in the set? Okay, why would you do that? Well, if we run this, if zero is not in the set and zero is not in the set, so we would run it for one. Well, that basically means that one starts a sequence. If you check if one minus one, so if one minus one in the set S, that means that this thing is the start of a sequence. And so on its own, it's just a sequence of size one. Does it get bigger than that? Well, we'll go in the forward direction only and we'll say yes we actually have two and we have three and we have four we don't have five so from this element we did actually see a sequence of length four but now let's do the same thing over here we say hey for two we'll try to do that check but we want to run first we only want to do this if two minus one is not in the set and it turns out that one is in the set okay what does that mean well that means that one or maybe something else was starting the sequence so we've already kind of ran this loop thing of checking all the other numbers or we're going to later and so we're not worried about that that check right there that stops this from being an o of n squared algorithm and it makes it just o of n we only do it for if you're starting a sequence he's going to go up but here we'll go through the numbers but he's not going to check anything neither are these guys so to do it for our original problem here we would put all this stuff in the set and we'd say hey is 99 in the set no it's not okay so let's try running this is 101 in the set no it's not and so this just outputs 
put it a sequence length of one. We'll check for four. Does four start a sequence? Is three in the set? Yes, it actually is. Okay, so four is not starting a sequence. We don't want to work with it. We want to worry about that later. 200, it does start a sequence, but it's just going to be a sequence of length one. For one, this is where we actually run that check. And so zero or one minus one is not in the set. So it does start a sequence. So we'd get two and we get three and we get four. We wouldn't get five. So he outputs a sequence of four. And for these guys, three and two, they do not start a sequence. So we're not going to run that. This leads to an O of N algorithm. It's really clever and pretty awesome. Okay, so we're just going to start this off by putting all of the numbers into a hash set. And we can do that with S is the set of nums. We'll get our current longest sequence that we've seen. And we haven't seen anything. So it's going to be zero. And we'll say, hey, for each num in the nums, if num minus one is not in the set, it starts a sequence. So we want to start going up. So the next number that we're looking for is, well, the number plus one. Okay, if we had next num, well, then the sequence would be length two, and we could keep bumping this up. So next num is num plus one, and the current length of our sequence is just one. Now, while the next num is in the set S, well, the length that we've seen is one more. So our sequence is one more, and we need to bump up that next number to keep this check going. Okay, so after we eventually break out of this loop, finally, at some point, our next number was not in the set. So our sequence concludes. So we'll set longest to be the max of what it was already and the current length that we're looking at. We'll only set longest to be the current length if that length is actually bigger than what it's seen already. And at the end of this, we can simply return our longest. And if we run that, then that's going to work just fine. Okay, so the time complexity of this algorithm, this is going to be a big O of N solution because you're going to go through the numbers. And again, you only do this sort of nested loop thing if the number minus one is not in the set. And so that's not going to be n squared. That's going to be O of n. And the space complexity, that comes from using our set. And so we are basically storing the n things as well. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day.